Welcome, everybody, to Tammy Tuesday, the podcast of life, love, and purpose. I'm happy you're here today, and I'm excited to share our wonderful guest, new friend, and intuitive life coach, Sarah Strong. I'm so happy you're here. Thanks for being here today. Hi, Tammy. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Of course. I'm I'm excited because, as I mentioned, we are becoming new friends, fast friends. And it's interesting enough because we met at a ladies' event and um, we're kind of immediately magnetized. Of course, mm-hmm. I was there with my husband, and I thought it was cool how you just suddenly approached him and I and started talking to us. And of course, all of a sudden, the conversation turned into kind of what you do and what you're all about, which was perfect alignment, mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, always, right? Yes. So I would love to today get to know you better and share with our listeners, because you have so many beautiful gifts in this world that you share with the world and with your clients and what you're doing and your purpose. So I'd love to maybe get a little bit of a background on how things began for you, because you've told me some of that story. Yes. And I'd love to share it. It started when you were very young, and then it kind of buttoned up and then went right back as you got older. So maybe share a little bit of that story just to give some background about your history. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to. Thank you. Uh, so yes, yeah, so it was beautiful. It's, we have a very sweet, meet cute story of your hubby connecting us. He was really, he was the magnet really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He <laughs> very is. Very cute magnet. And um, yeah, so I was very grateful. And something I just wanted to add to that is that when I go to a networking event alone, I like to make a connection deeper as soon as I get there with one or two people. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciated how you approached that. Like you were super intentional immediately. And that was really impressive to me because hmm. I don't meet, you don't meet many people that are like that True. straight off the bat. Right. Cause you asked me, what do you do? And, and you're like, Oh no, I don't want to know the answer to that. I want to know who hmm. are you? Right. Who and are you? It was really powerful. It, it stuck with me. So I appreciated it. I very much appreciated that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, my pleasure. So to just go into a little bit of my story, I was a psychic child, which is it's was very fun for me because I could do naughty things. And, <laughs> and, and my, you're from tell us. Say I'm where from, from Australia. You're from a small town. Yes, I'm born in a place called Geraldton, okay. Western Australia. And I grew up at, at about ten. I was like over it, and I was I'm quite I was quite a uh, outspoken child. Yeah. <laughs> so, I can see that. <laughs> by the age of 10, I was basically forcing my mum to move to Perth, which was a bigger city, mm-hmm. much, much bigger. Mm-hmm. And do you have siblings? I have one brother. One yes. brother. Okay. Yes. I have a brother. And so at that age, well, as a very, very young child, I could hear people's thoughts and I knew things. And I really truly believe that I was hearing the word of like, the voice of God, Mm -hmm. not the word of God, but specifically the voice of God, because I would look around my church. I was brought up as a Christian and then move, we moved into Pentecostal Christianity, which is quite intense. It's like singing, dancing, speaking in tongues and all that, like Mm. pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. As, as a child who could read minds and feel energy in an empathic way. Right. It's even, that's like magnetized. Yeah. More intense. Yeah. It's way more intense. So, it was just interesting. I would observe a lot and I never told anyone that I was psychic Mm -hmm. and I didn't tell people. I intuitively knew not to do that. Okay. Were you hearing don't, don't, no, you just knew in my soul, my soul. I was, I was really in tune with that. And so I would do, I would just get away with naughty things as a kid (laughs) because my mum would hide the chocolate biscuits in a different place all the time because we'd find them and eat them all. Right. And um, every single time I could find them because I could trace her, either her energy to where she went, or I could just read the energy of the biscuits and find them. Wow. So that, that was a cool thing. (laughs) Yeah, for sure. Every (laughs) kid kid. wants that. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Um, But as I grew up, it's, it's a lot of information. Oh, yeah. So hearing people's minds, hearing what people thought about kids and hearing my mum's mind, like that's- What that was, was that like? Well, What I, did you learn? What did you hear? I don't remember a lot. Okay. And that's by design really because yeah. 
it's hard to store that much information that's not your own. Mm. A lot of it I took on as my as my journey. Right. So I'm kind of unpacking that. Yeah. It fucked me up so that I could unpack it and become a life coach. <laughs> right. Well, that's what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's the pain was caused as a as a kid from knowing what how she treated me, what she thought of me, knowing all that at such a deep on such a deep level that the unpacking of that, the healing of that helped me, it helps me today to hold space for people and have the compassion because I know what it feels like. Yeah. And without it, I really don't have credibility as a coach. Right. So the experience of it at the time was um, I could psychoanalyze her and my mum probably inappropriately would tell me about her problems and I would very like specifically be able to tell her what to do and she couldn't hear it from me because I was a child. Sure. So that it turned into psychological abuse basically. And so I just learned to not trust her. I learned to not trust. I didn't trust men either. My brother wasn't trustworthy at that time either. So I I learned the world wasn't a safe place. Wow. That's tough as a child. How old are we talking? Uh, I would say as soon as I could talk, Mm -hmm. I was channeling. Okay. So I believe I was channeling Christ Mm -hmm. because that was the only deity that I was close to being a Christian. Right. And so probably I would say from the age of about four. Okay. And I could read energy before then. So I felt unsafe from the age of two. Mm, What did that look like? Just deciding that I wasn't going to rely on my mom, which is ridiculous <laughs> for a two year old, you right, know, like, yeah. but I really have a memory of wow. being two yeah. and thinking, fuck the world, fuck you all. I'm not going to rely on you and taking on energy of my own responsibility. Right. Wow. That's big. And looking at my mom and saying, and just thinking, how the fuck is she going to raise me? Like literally, I, I remember having that thought at a young age. Because you you realized that you were more in tune with your own than she could possibly help you with? Or what was the reason, you think? No. The reason was that she's pretty crazy. Like mm. bipolar, Okay, had narcissistic tendencies. And it turns into sounds like a level of abuse. Yes, yes. And my father was absent, so my mum put my brother into a father role. So it was really Mm. we went through like very unhealthy family dynamic. I mean, it's really codependent, and it's there was three of us. So that the codependent cycle was either there was two victims and one perpetrator, or you know, it was Mm -hmm. just that kind of codependent cycle that happened a lot. Um, but it was by design again. Right. And that's what I wanted to, that's what I designed myself to go through. Could you see that then? No. Okay. Hell no. I just didn't know what you were, (laughs) what you really did understand at that age. I, I, I understood nothing. Okay. Except that God would say to me, stick with me, kid, you're going to be okay. Okay. So you had some trust. Yes. I had trust in spirit. Right. At that time. Okay. And I really loved Jesus. Like Jesus was my dude. Mm. Like literally I could feel him. I knew him Mm -hmm. at a soul level. Right. And and I'd look around to the people around me and be like, yo, bitches don't know Jesus. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And you're like, no, I, you don't know him. Like I know him (laughs) because yeah, he doesn't judge me for being who who I am. Right. And they all did. My mom did, my the people around me. You know what's funny? What just popped in? Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen the movie Cruella? Cruella, uh, yes. I'm picturing that little girl. Mm-hmm. Cruella as a child. Oh, uh, yeah. And I'm not comparing you to Cruella de Vil, no. <laughs> but I am saying as a child, she had that, I think, intuitive nature about her mm-hmm. and it made her sneaky and crafty and, um, she beat to her, she danced to the own beat of her own drum kind mm, of person mm-hmm. when she was young. And she obviously looked very different. And I think that she had, I just, I don't know, for some reason, when you were describing that child that you mm, were, mm-hmm. it reminded me of her in that, in that age. I don't know why. Yeah. It's that, interesting. That's interesting because 
I became quite twisted mm. in my thinking. So by the age of – when I was 14, my mum attempted suicide for the first time. Mm. And I at, at age 14, I changed my name back to my mum's maiden name, which wasn't even legal. I hadn't legally changed it because I hated my father so much. I just – And I he was never in your life? Uh, in and out. Okay. But very, you know, brief. Mm-hmm. It was just brief. So, like, I had no trust and I, I was really – Angry. I was angry. Oh my God, at 14. Because my mum would lie to us a lot and like really mentally torment us mm. about lots of things. And by from the age of 10, there was a lot of abuse that I was just not okay. I had an attitude problem. My mum, every week I would get some form of like very, in, when we were alone, she would, it would just be very intense. So I'd carried that into being 14. Then she tried to commit suicide, even though she was my main, the main perpetrator in my life, Mm -hmm. I still relied on her. Sure. She was still my mom. Right. You know, and I was only 14. And so I was just, I, I, if there was any last scary of hope left inside of me, it died in that moment. And when she, when she attempted suicide. Yes. I remember seeing her laying on the bed and I just was like disgusted. I was like, you oh. fucking bitch. I had no sympathy whatsoever at all. Wow. And by the age of 16, I had ran away from home. I'd started smoking weed when I was 16 and then 17, I was just, I just got mixed up in bad crowds, you know, a lot, around a lot of drug dealers. I was doing illegal shit for money, you know, which was just working behind a bar, but it was illegal. Right. And it was, you know, there's other aspects that I don't need to go into here, but I was doing shit that because I had no moral compass. I didn't trust the world. I was just like, yeah, let's just and I and I'd grown up quite poor, right? So I was just like, I just wanted money. I just wanted to have experiences, and I just started to. And I was a wild child as well, you know. Mm-hmm. So that kind of from from the age of seventeen to thirty seven, I had a huge journey of drug and alcohol abuse. I did move house. I mean, sorry, I moved country. I moved from Perth to Sydney. Actually, when I was 20, I did live in Japan for three months, three months, which birthed my true passion and love to travel the world. Mm. I realized Australia was not going to be my place uh, of residence in my adulthood. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Sydney and met a guy. We got married. Then we moved to London and it was a lot of fun, like a lot of fun and a lot of a lot of partying. It was just sex, drugs and rock and roll, mm-hmm. like literally use your imagination, then times that by a thousand. Right. <laughs> you know, like it was wild. Yeah. It was like super, super wild. And I didn't know what was driving me inside. I had not done any – I I'd tried to do some work on myself, but I really – hadn't done any work on myself. During this time, was there any inkling of what you were experiencing as a child? Did you know it was there? Was it touchable? Was it seeable? Was it knowable? Or were you just completely blocking it out with the, with the abuse you were doing to yourself? I didn't have that cogn- cognition around my the pain right. that I was in because mm-hmm. it was, there were so many drugs and alcohol. It was like drugs or alcohol. You were super numb. I was numbed out. Yeah. Completely numbed out. Wow. Although I was still on a spiritual quest. Hmm. Well, I think there's a lot of truth to that when people do that. Yeah. So you're always on a spiritual quest. Exactly. No matter what's going on in your exactly. life anyway. I mean, Even you if are. you're totally fucking up. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if you don't realize it, you are. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. It's so true. So true. And so I'd always wanted to meditate I was always into yoga, meditation, martial arts, all these things. And my mum would would not allow it because it wasn't Christian. It was other Mm, alternative. Yeah, alternative spirituality. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to move to London (laughs) so she couldn't have an influence over my life anymore. Right, right. You know. Mm -hmm. And I moved to London and I started meditating. I meditated, I started meditating in probably 2001 slash two. Did somebody guide you to do that? I met a lady who we did, uh, what is her name? Mataji. Mm. She's a, she's a, a deity. She was in, she was embodied and um, she had this specific meditation. I would do 10 minutes in the morning every single day. Mm. I started doing 10, then 20. Then in London I did meet a guru and then I went my 
whole meditation journey got really, really deep. And I would, I was meditating like an hour in the morning and sometimes at night as well, sometimes like we'd have long, um, like satsang. What was your husband? Oh, on we board broke with up. This? Oh, you had already broken up at this point. Yeah. He'd, I'd broken up with him in when I was 29. Okay. We broke up. So we were together about five years. Okay. So, so yeah, there was this huge journey, but it was always spiritual, but there was always drugs and alcohol happening in the background. Mm -hmm. So it was like, I could, it was like this, like sitting on the fence energy. So I couldn't step in. Well, it's again, it's still by design. Like every single piece of the puzzle, I designed it as from a soul perspective. Mm -hmm. I wanted to live this whole existence, exactly whatever step I took. Sure. I wanted to experience it. Experience it. Exactly. And so by the time I was 37, I'd kind of, I was at a point in my life that I couldn't keep using and drinking the way I was. It was going to kill me Mm -hmm. like very soon. I believe it was going to kill me very soon. Mm. And I, um, I went into recovery. I, I started my journey. Yeah. And in a couple of years into that journey, I met somebody who, a guy, he's, his mum was very like very pronounced or renowned psychic mm-hmm. in Australia. She'd read she'd read for Bill Gates and you know people fly in to see her for twenty four hours and then fly out of Australia. She was, she was very good, mm. and so he was clairvoyant, clairaudient. He had all the clairs. He was very gifted, and so he started giving me a language. He said that I'm psychic, a medium, a channel, and th- these things started giving me actual words mm. to describe what I'd lived with my whole life. Right. So Previously started, that you'd shut out well, or numbed yeah, up or just. Yeah. Ex- yeah. That, oh, well, I mean, I, I believe that I, I was always intuitive. It was just, yeah, under a lot of um, pain and sadness. And right. I didn't trust it. Right. I didn't trust well, it. Well, and you weren't fully ready to step into it yet. Exactly. Exactly. So I started to research how can an empath live in the world? <laughs> how can they actually. That's a like, big question. <laughs> I'm still, I think we'll be figuring that out till we're dead. (laughs) Indeed. (laughs) So true. Um, But I've, I found out I've, I've did a lot of reading, a lot of research and that singing and yoga and Mm. dancing and I'd already been meditating. So I didn't stop meditating. So it's in 2001 slash two, I started and I literally, I have literally meditated almost every day. Maybe I've missed five or six days. Wow. Now all that time in that time. That's amazing. So that's a true practice, everybody. (laughs) That's that's legit practice right there. And I would say that one thing that I hear the most about meditation is I ask people if they've tried it and they were like, yeah, I tried it once or twice. Even if you try it for six months or a year, that's not trying it. Mm -hmm. Like trying it. Like I believe that I tried it for 12 years. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's always, it's always and a practice. And I really didn't feel like I did it. Right. I really didn't even feel like I was in meditation. Right. But I just kept doing it because despite my, like, despite myself, it's like, I want to do this. And then I started to go to some like meditation retreats and do some Osho meditation, like dynamic meditation. And I started to like really, and once I got sober, my meditation practice was like, Ooh. Oh, I'm sure. I just went, I just, I could go really deep, really I'm quick. sure. Uh, so if you're out there and you're trying meditation, keep going. Right. Don't stop. <laughs> it is a very special, it is life changing. It, it really is life changing. Yeah. I believe that too. Yeah. Um, so by this point I'm, I'm singing regular, I'm singing daily and just kind of like but that. What, what were you singing? Cause sound is such a powerful tool for creation. I don't know people, not everybody understands that, but that's, mm-hmm. it's a real thing. So what were you singing? Were you chanting? Were you? Uh, I was just singing songs. Singing just regular songs. Yeah. Just singing yeah, out loud. Just singing out loud. I love to put on YouTube, choose a song I loved on the radio or that I loved and just learn, sing like, I'd sing along to the song with lyrics until I'd learned it. And then I'd sing the song karaoke style. That's how you taught yourself to sing? Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> I want to do that. That's do awesome. It. I know. I know I can. I've it's talked about this. So I know fun. I know I can do it. And I that's the one gift that I wish I could just give myself, which I know I can. I just yes. haven't done it yet. But I love to sing too. It's really simple. It didn't cost anything. Mm-hmm. 
and it filled my heart with joy Mm -hmm. every morning. I I just had a practice where whenever I put my, when I put my makeup on, when I go into the bathroom, I sing in the shower. Yeah. Except I I shower once a day. Um, (laughs) But so I bring my, my, uh, my speaker and my phone with, with my YouTube on it. And I'll just sing my songs. And I was just telling you earlier that I'm just finishing a 10 week competition. Right. I know. Well, this has gone, talk about the singing for a minute. Cause clearly this has been one of the things that you've really brought into your life. It's been obviously soul filling for yes, you. Yes, it really is fulfilling. Um, so I've been a dancer. I was a born dancer. As soon as I could walk, I could dance. I always had natural rhythm and I trained, I, I taught myself how to dance as, as a very little girl. And then I did that and I trained and I really loved singing, but I had no confidence. So as I, as I grew up and I thought I couldn't sing, but then I would join lots of choirs and I've done a lot of singing instruction. I had an amazing vocal coach in Sydney, very famous opera instructor. Mm. And he, and it was like this little seed kind of, he planted a seed for me because he's like, we would do these visualizations before class. I would lay on the ground and I'd do this visualization and it'd always be in color. And he said, you are the only person who visualizes in color that he has ever worked with. Oh, wow. But he, he clearly was working intuitively with, with exactly. Yes. People. Because, well, yes, he was, he was that's very not, intuitive. That's not, I mean, for, for a singing vocal that's coach, weird. that's not the norm. <laughs> no, it's not the norm. So that's really cool. Yeah, did but, you find him specifically? How did that, how did you end I up syncing up know. with him? Well, I, prob- I mean, I know <laughs> clearly it was faded, but yes, it was. like how that's amazing. Yeah. It, it really, truly was amazing because I didn't believe in my own vocal ability at that time. Oh, and I'm he would never have taken me on had I not ha- had he not seen something in me because this dude is on the fucking map. Wow. And I, I've Googled him since and his name's Steve Ostro. You can actually Google him. He is a huge deal. I had no idea at the time. Wow. He's a massive, massive, massive deal in the operatic world in Australia. Oh. And so once I knew this, I'm like, holy shit. I must really be able to see. <laughs> yeah. You're like, if he likes me, then I must have something here. Yes. I mean, wow. But I was in my early twenties. So right. I, I couldn't. And then some things that he's, he taught me at that time I've remembered. And so, yeah, so my singing journey in 2018, it really, I really started to commit. So I met that, the guy with the psychic mum in 2016, and then I moved to Miami in 2018 and so I had a very intense job and it was like, it was very, it was a lot. So I, all of my practices, I kind of stepped them up, mm-hmm. if you like, to handle um, the output of energy. And so I really started committing to singing songs that and learning songs, like learning the lyrics and being able to sing them. And then later on I would sing them in karaoke and be able to get on stage. When you were learning the technicality of the songs, it sounds like. I mean, yes. all every piece of it. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And I have still a lot, a lot to learn. And I feel like I could do some vocal coaching now knowing, because I've just had a 10-week journey of singing on stage, performing, and not just performing. I've been in a troupe of all, most other drag queens and a couple of other singers and with lights and no lyrics to read from from the right. screen. Yeah. And it's been such an amazing journey, quite confronting at times. I bet. And brave. Thank you. Thank you. And I I've really got a lot of confidence now on stage. I can I can do it now. At the beginning I was really nervous. Yeah. I so, believe it. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. Good for you. Thank you. Thank you. I um It's interesting because at the end of each, because we're judged and scored and there's a winner every week. And at the end of each session, you can go to the judges and get feedback on your shows. Mm. And I felt really good about my show last night. And then I I checked in with with a drag queen who was one of our judges. He's been a drag queen for 11 years. Wow. Like the most stunning drag queen I have ever seen. Like, (laughs) wow. He wasn't in drag last night, but he was judging for us and- he just like, he just kept me grounded, hmm. you know, and, mm-hmm. and he, he showed me that I, I was, I have been in my head a little bit about it because nerves put me in my head 
around certain aspects of it. And he just shared with me to, he just helped, he's just helping me. And it makes me want to do another performance. I've got one more performance I can like, um, apply his advice to yeah. us, which yeah, I yeah. will. Well, that's not the only performance. of. There's lots of performances coming. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> you just got to find the opportunities. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, yeah, I have, I, I've, I've been doing a little burlesque and that's really fun Oh, that's well. fun. <laughs> yeah, last night was my raunchiest burlesque show, <laughs> <laughs> which is really cool. So um, just like coming back to the, the spiritual journey, after moving so in 2016, there's a very prominent uh, event that happened in my life. Mm. I was in Perth in Australia. I'd moved back there, not really by choice, more by necessity and kind of got stuck there for a couple of years. So I, I didn't have much direction. I found it really hard to get work. I had a dear friend of mine helping me financially. It was, it was just, it's Australia's an odd place for me. Mm. It's not really my place. Right. So things don't flow. Right. And I wonder yeah. why that is. Do you know why that is? Um, I believe I, I, I wanted to be born there mm-hmm. because in the, the world, the world loves Australians. Mm-hmm. Like literally the world loves Australians. I know, it's I true. Have, I've never been to a place where somebody went, oh, you're Australian? Fuck you. You know, like it's really. So that, you know what? <laughs> I've never really put that much thought into that. That is so true. There's something about an Australian accent that is so disarming. Mm. At least for mm. me. I'm not speaking for everybody, but for me, like when I first met, I was like, oh, ooh, I immediately, <laughs> I really, I have goosebumps when I say that. Mm. I really am drawn to Australian accent. I just think it's so disarming and friendly and, I don't know. I just, mm. that's how I feel. So mm-hmm. I feel maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Cause you're right. Yes. It's, and the country itself is hugely spiritual. Mm. I don't co- know that much about it. The country itself, there's a, a little pebble in Western Australia specifically, that is the oldest pebble on earth. Mm. And there is, I have not read, I mean, I've not read that much about the Aboriginal history. I do know that it, they are one of the most deeply spiritual and ancient. Mm. Like um, ancient civilization type thing. Indigenous yeah. people. Yeah. And I, and that's what obviously I have a super, I have super connection to the indigenous here in the mm. U S mm-hmm. so I feel more guided by the Native American than I do by the Aboriginal, but I was friends with a lot of Aboriginals as I was growing up. So there's like this energy and the fact about Australia not being my place is it's kind of base level. Ah, When you think about Australia, it's like, yeah, I'm going surfing, man, and oh. I'm going to drink some beer. And like for me it doesn't hold that deep. really deep spirituality even though you said in, you feel like it's a very deeply spiritual place. Yes, but that's not mine. Yours. That's not what you're connected to. No. Got it. No. That makes sense. Um, and, you know, I got my life learning from London, which is multicultural and and so diverse. Mm-hmm, big time. It's like prob- it's probably one of the most diverse places in the world. Mm-hmm to have all, like it's a melting pot of all these different cultures and it and really is. You can walk down the street and hear like 10 different languages mm-hmm. in the space of like a few steps really. Right. So that, that was kind of, I birthed that for a reason because mm-hmm. I wanted to travel young. Right. And have those experiences. And it's like accelerated learning, mm-hmm. you know? Oh yeah. So in 2016, I got this message. I started, I'd, I'd heard my guides my whole life periodically. Would you listen to them? Sometimes. Yeah. (laughs) Sometimes, not always. So So like, no, I'm going to do this experience. I don't really care what you say. (laughs) Yeah. 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 In this moment, I heard them loud and clear and I took action exactly on what they had asked me to do. Hmm. And yeah, I did joke about that. I'd be like, yeah, I'd always hear these voices and, but I never do what they say. And, and then this, this time I could do what they said Hmm. In, in the past, my illness of um, drug addiction and alcoholism got in the way. Right. Because I was in self-sabotage cycles. Right. So this day 
They said, go and find something. This is the message. What? Okay, tell me. <laughs> I'm like, go find something. And I'm like, they, I mean, they, they just know me that I'm a, I am love adventure yeah. and um, I love figuring shit out. Yeah. So they didn't need to tell me much. <laughs> like, just go do it. Just go find something. That was exactly those words. What did and, that mean to you? Well, find something spiritual. Mm-hmm. And I was living in an area in, in Perth that, has lots of spiritual shops. So it's mm. down in Fremantle. I was actually in Cottesloe, but I knew that I was going to go to all these shops in Fremantle, all these crystal stores, mm-hmm. and they have oracle decks and books mm-hmm. and yada, yada, the crystals. So I started to go through these stores in Fremantle and um, I would go, I'd go into one and be like, no, this is not, it's not here. And then I'd go into another and it's not here. And then I got it, I went into this massive store and literally it's huge. It's like massive. And I walked from the door. I walked through, I kind of meandered a little bit to the one side, but then it was just this like pool of energy mm. pulled me straight to the back wall to mm-hmm. this one book called Crystal Masters 333 by Alana Fairchild, who is Australian and mm. does a lot of oracle cards like Quan Yin and a lot of the other oracle cards she does. I grabbed this book from the shelf. Is that your draw to 333? Yes. Okay. That is one of them. That's where it started. That's, yeah, I feel like that's where it started for sure. And so this book like went into my hands and then it weighed like a ton of bricks in my hands. It, so it went from its normal weight into like 10 times its weight Mm. in my hands. And then my feet felt like they bolted to the floor and then tears just like avalanched out of my eyes. Wow. Like literally I wasn't crying, but tears just went and I was like, oh, I guess this This is is the book. (laughs) I think I found it. Yeah. (laughs) And I was practicing like um, I've had spending issues in the past um, as well. And I was like practicing like not like speed shopping or what do they call it? Impulse shopping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I went, oh, maybe I'll come back and get it tomorrow. And literally they wouldn't let me put it back on the shelf. They're like, no, you're taking it right now. Mm. And so I I got my book and I saw a bunch of like Oracle cards and I, um, I chose the Ascended Masters and the native native spirit deck. Mm. So I bought those two decks and the book. This was in Perth. This is in Perth in 2016. Okay. And I started my journey. So I started reading that book and then I, I met another lady with a crystal store and she gifted me the Kuan Yin deck as well. So I started with these three beautiful decks. At that point, did you know how to do all that or were you learning? No, nope. I had no idea. You're like, oh, I'm just getting these things and I'm just going to start playing with them. Yes. Okay. Yes. And every time I got a deck, I would always read the book, the right. introduction to the book and, and learn how they would do the card readings and spreads and all that kind of stuff. And what it all meant. What it all meant. Yeah. I mean, I knew what it meant. But you were still in information gathering mode. I was in information gathering mode. And it's funny because I have been psychic my whole life, yet I would always ask for proof. Mm. Because as a kid growing up as a Christian, I didn't want to have blind faith. I'm like, fuck you with blind faith. I want proof. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like. Well, I think most people do. Yeah. Which is where we get stuck, I think. But yeah. So, but I would ask for proof and I would get proof. Yeah. Well, some people don't listen to the proof, though. <laughs> Right, it's true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that's that that can happen from years of, of conditioning, right? Into like believing that you're not worthy, or right. you know, mm-hmm. other for and other underlying, oh, sure. yeah, you know, traumas mm-hmm. that um, blocking you from are receiving informing it. the the behavior on the surface. Um. So yeah, so I'm reading this book. Yeah. Holy shit! This book. What's the book called? Uh, Crystal Masters 333 okay. by Alana Fairchild. Okay. And it has every Ascended Master, or maybe not every single Ascended Master because there's probably millions. Right? right. We don't know them all. No, we don't know them Not all. in this life. No. It had Buddha, Christ, Mother Mary, Lady Master Nada, Kuan Yin, Lao Tzu, um, Paramahansa Yogananda, mm-hmm. like like literally from all the walks. Wow. All the spiritual walks. Yeah. And. Oh, I have goosebumps. Yeah. Well, and because they were like, we, they literally said, we choose you. 
And so there's three aspects of each chapter. So there was an angel, a crystal, and a master. So would you say this book is like a living read? Yes. Okay. Yes. I grew out of it myself, but I would I would recommend it to anyone who wants to have an actual physical visceral experience of the masters mm-hmm. to read it. Okay. Um, so after reading those three aspects of the each chapter, at the end of the chapter, they have a meditation initiation to that master. Okay. So I read a lot of that book. I didn't. I never finished it because I got to a point where I I went back to read it and I was like, hmm, nope. You're kind of ready to move on. I was done. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was. You done. got what you needed out of yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, well, they opened the portal to my ascended mastership. So you already you you got what you needed out of yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And then I started reading the Oracle cards. And in 2018, when I moved to Miami, I bought the book with me and my Oracle cards, obviously. And I kept getting these messages to read for people. And it was just like kind of psychic readings, I guess. Like it, I did not call it intuitive coaching yet. I hadn't met my coach to train yet. And I had one of my friends, we traded, she did biofield tuning, which was epic and I loved it. So we traded and I wasn't ready to receive money for my gift yet. Right. <laughs> I That's cleared. a big one. I, yeah, exactly. It's a huge That's one. That's a really help, big one. I help people clear that. Clear yes. That That's a big, big one. Yeah. Keep going. So, yeah. So we traded, which was good, easy for my- um, It was comfortable. Yeah. For my nervous system. And- she bought eight things into a session. Now, I at that time, I didn't necessarily know that I was a medium as well. Uh, the unfolding of like learning about all the things is exciting and a lot. Overwhelming. It <laughs> can be, yes. And so my friend bought in eight things that she wanted to accomplish in her life. Okay. And a couple, like a couple of her family members came in. I could see them in the room. I could, they would chat, they were chatting through me. So I found out that I was a medium. I found out that I could see dead people. <laughs> right. And um, they were very entertaining. They were in they were very they were in the opera world and, you know, performers and very fantastic people. So they were very funny. It was comfortable. It was. It was easy. Yeah. And so of those eight things, every single one of them manifested in her life within two months. Whoa. Of working with me. I have goosebumps again. <laughs> yes. So what did that tell you? Well, um, she didn't tell me. <laughs> when did you find out? Probably months later. A, a friend, a, a friend of mine. Through a friend? Yeah. Not even from she her? She didn't. She didn't. I think it freaked her out. Like, I really think. Oh, she wasn't ready for it. Oh, I, I, I feel like that her ego may have just been like, we don't want anyone else to have that much power. Proof. Did she want proof? <laughs> well, she got proof because all of it all happened. happened. But because it wasn't just her. Oh, she didn't like that you helped. I don't know. Open it up for that, her. That is my feeling. Okay. I haven't, I don't know that. Right. But yeah, we, we didn't end up, you know, we're not close anymore. But I mean, I love her. She's, she's a great lady and. I'm so happy that all those things happened for her. Okay, so what did that tell you? Yeah, when that happened, I'm like, whoa, that's like powerful, like manifestation, right? Skill in, or not skill, but just well, and vision. You had vision that you yeah. didn't know you had. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And gifts I didn't know I had either. So it just started like it started to make more and more sense to me. Um, and then in 2020, in January 2020. I I was going to these daybreaker events, which are sober events that you we did yoga, dancing, and meditation. There was three structures. It was like a few hours. It was originated in New York. They used to do them at like six a.m. on a Tuesday morning, so people would go in the morning before work, and and it would just set their day up. Hmm. And so daybreaker is a global you know, a global company. And so I was at this event in person. It was one of the, it was the last daybreaker event in person. Hmm. Oh, and before I, everything shut down, you mean? Before everything shut down in 2020. And I knew I had to be there. I had other plans and I canceled those other plans because I knew I needed to be there. Mm-hmm. And I, I I was there and I'd done my yoga and this gorgeous woman, woman walks up to me and she's like, oh my God, you've got such amazing energy. And because I was here practicing in front of her, she was just behind me, like not, 
I could have touched her. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so she came up and said what great energy I had and she had these beautiful crystal, like face crystals on her face and and I was kind of in my own little world. I don't know, I don't know why, but I usually would have opened up a conversation with somebody that said that to me, but on that day I did not. Mm. Anyway, so we both had our own experiences. We were dancing and playing and having fun and at the end there was this big meditation circle that we we broke off into little groups of like five people and for anyone that hadn't been witnessed by their family or that by their parents and encouraged we did um, validation mm. so someone would stand in the middle and tell us something they had achieved and we'd all validate them oh, be like yeah that's awesome. a cool exercise yeah so it was kind of so that was your circle that was so my small circle we would do that but then we did it in the whole group so there were oh. like 250 people there wow. in the whole circle and then that people were invited to stand in the middle of that amount of people and share something great that they had achieved. And then we all validated them. And this lady, Morgan, my coach, she jumped in the, she was the first one in the circle. She shared that she had been sober seven years and oh. da, 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 and then all these other things. Mm-hmm. And then, so I'm like, Oh my God, I've got to talk to her after, the, after this. So right. immediately after. And so she's, she is my coach today and, at that time I booked a session with her. We met for lunch and then I booked a session with her and she had a, a course for coaches and I learned how to put all the skills that I'd been gathering my whole life into how to hold space for people so they stay in their power and that people that come and work with me, they do their heavy lifting. Mm-hmm. I just channel their guides, the Ascended Masters, or you know, they all help. I don't think I'd channel the Ascended Masters just for a normal person's session. Sometimes Jesus will come in and other deities will come to support and assist. But that's how I learned. I, I launched my business in 2020 and started to do – I feel like I'm still I, – I just – like the next thing that I'm just about to do, the wild feminine stuff we were talking about earlier, this is my jams. Mm. That That is – my heart, my heart's passion. Okay. And it's taken four years. So yeah, I was, well, and you've been doing so many things in this space yes. for a long time now. For a long time now. Yes. So back up for a second. Yes. So when, when you met, what was her name? Morgan. Morgan. When you met Morgan, Morgan, I have goosebumps, <laughs> empowered you to say yes. And you said, okay, I'm doing this. So that that put you in your power and you said, okay, I have this, I can do this, I can trust this. So she coached you into stepping into all of that. Yes. Is that accurate? Yes. The first session that we ever did, it was like, it was natural to me because I just started speaking all this truth and I started to hear myself channeling my own truth mm. to start to clear the energy to go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And could you feel things clearing? Yeah. Traumas and past? Uh, no, 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 not quite. No, no, not in that session, but Jesus came in like my wisdom around what was going to happen on earth from that point. Cause I came here specifically for 2020. Mm. I have in the last, um, in the last four years, I've had a lot of recall a lot of lit recall. And I remember when I was, um, what's it called? Conceived. Mm -hmm. I remember doing a timeline check. Oh, wow. (laughs) So I was like, I I traveled down the timeline and was like, oh yeah, 2020. Cool. Cool. Yeah. This is the right one. Cool. And go, I birthed in and then I went into amnesia. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, which apparently that was your last conscious thought before this life. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so when 2020 came, I, I could, I, I marked in my, I love doing these kinds of things. I, I was like, Oh, there it is an elevator in Miami. And I'm like, this is it. It's, it's happening. It started. (laughs) That's, that's like, and I knew, I knew everything. I I, I know I I sound like a completely, no, it doesn't to me, it doesn't doesn't to me, but I understand it. But I knew it. I I literally knew every, I mean, I've, I've lived the timeline before. Not to this, the success that we've got in this timeline now mm-hmm. is completely different. Whereas at that time, I'm like, okay, it's starting. And I, I just started to get excited. And I hadn't met Morgan yet. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. So I marked So you already it. were there. Yeah. You just needed one little nudge yeah. from someone here. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So then, okay. So then as you started this journey with Morgan, what, what did that look like? How did you, cause you said you went into business in 2020 cause yes. you knew it was time to start and she encouraged you to say, yes. you just chose to say yes now. Yes. Yeah, so I did one session with her and so mm-hmm. everything, I did the session on something weird happened with my boss and um, I, I refused to go into work because of the whole country wasn't going to work Mm -hmm. and he's like well if you don't want to come you either got to come to work or you don't have a job I'm like well I quit then and and then so I had two days and I that was I was very overworked I had two days off and I was like okay I'm going to use these fucking days yeah I'm going to use these because like I don't know what's going to happen so I read um, I had a book I was reading called Mary Magdalene Revealed I read Mm -hmm. that in the first day Mm -hmm. And that's an amazing read by Marianne Williamson. If mm-hmm. anyone out there has not read that, mm-hmm. I highly recommend that book. It is a heart opening. I haven't read that one, but I know a lot about it. Even my my feet are tingling right now as I'm saying this. So it's very, very, very powerful book. That's the second time that's come up recently. So clearly that's my sign. Yeah, okay. To read it. It is it is life- And I love Marianne it, Williamson too. <laughs> it really is life changing because it just sheds so much light on the lies that were told around Mary Magdalene and Christ. And where did I just hear this? Seriously. Oh my gosh, Sarah, I literally was just hearing this. Where was it? I don't remember, but anyway, that's powerful. Cause that was, it was strong where I heard it recently mm. and now I'm hearing it again. So yeah, keep it's going to be powerful for you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so one day I read that book and I'd booked, I may have called Morgan I'm like, I need to do a session like now. Cause I was thinking, cause she was inaccessible and it was so skillful because I'm like, how am I going to talk to her again? I'm like, Oh, I guess I'm going to need to book a session. <laughs> and so I booked my session for that Wednesday. So Tuesday, I read my book Wednesday. These are my two days off Wednesday. I had my session and it, it just like the construct of my life just like slowly broke down. And within that session, it's like, yeah, your current situation where you're working is not going to serve you moving forward and da, da, da. And I was just like, oh yeah, I can see that. And at the end of that um, call, Morgan invited me to come to a course of for life coaching. Mm. And that was starting in March. We were, we were in January. Yeah. So I had some time um, but that was a Wednesday on Friday. I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I quit my job. I'd had enough. It was right. Well, was, that was, it was time. It was time. It was time. So I quit my job and I had this, I had then had all this time because my job provided accommodation and, and everything really finances, accommodation and job. So like by quitting my job it was a big deal. Yeah. You but, were like, um, oh my gosh, I've got to figure this out now. Well, I didn't need to quite yet because I was owed some money from my job and I knew that was going to take some time to come through. And so I got to just be, That's I got good. to rest in place mm-hmm. for a bit. Without too much stress. Because my body was in like complete stress. I, I, I'm, I know that I was completely stressed. Mm. And so I just started to like be able to decompress and I turned, I turned my phone off at night and not have an alarm and be uncontactable. And I hadn't had that liberty for two years. Wow. And I started to wake up at like three in the morning and three thirty three in the morning. And I'd be like, I'd wake up and go, like, okay, now what? They're like meditate. And so I'd have these, I'd go into meditation because the veil is extra thin mm. at 3 a.m. And between that, those hours mm-hmm. from three to six, the veil is very, very thin. And I had these couple of experiences where I believe the first one I was in meditation, I was awake. I literally went, I astral traveled to these places. Like Mm -hmm. I sat, I was sitting, I was Athena on a big crown, like a, sorry, a throne of golden light, kind of like golden crystals Mm -hmm. in this huge castle of golden crystal. I was Athena just sitting on my throne and just like, just being there, I, I literally had an experience of doing that. Wow. <laughs> and then switched to in that same 
immediately after that moment, I was flying around on a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> Literally flying around like, yeah, cool. I'm wow. flying around on a unicorn. And um, so that was one experience. And then another experience, I was again working up at 3 a.m. to meditate. And in that meditation, a beautiful, pure white unicorn reared up and says, I am you. <laughs> and so wow. I got this really beautiful rebirth into my unicorn magic at that time. And the course started in March and I started to hold space and become, you know, start started to learn how to become a coach. And within that course, we, we were taught how to start a business, how to invite people into programs and this and that. So I've been doing that ever since. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, so it's obviously evolved over time. Yes, very much. So as you started to step into this business, yes. making an actual business, how did you generate clientele? How was that happening for you? How was it evolving? I did a, a little bit through Facebook, a lot through my community, a lot of one, just from one-on-one, -on -one, getting intuitive hits, seeing people and being like, oh, and spirit telling me they need you. Um, now I do networking and things like that. But at that time it was different. Like we mm. weren't in, no, like to, we weren't able to go social. to events. We weren't social. Exactly. So it was a slow process. It was slow and very difficult. I was going to say, how it did you handle so that? Cause that's difficult. where I think people get stuck Yeah, or derailed. It was like literally pushing shit uphill because, yeah. um, Great visual, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I always say pushing a string. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the same, same. Um, I'm more Australian. Than <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it wasn't really difficult because of the external. It was more difficult because of my internal. Oh, explain my, that. My money blocks, my traumas, mm. all, of, all the things. I can really see it so clearly now. And... Literally, I'm still working through those today. Sure. I'm still, it's just, I am I have more mastery around it because just a little window into that growth is for that first year, 2020, I did the course of the coaching course for three months with Morgan. Before mm -hmm. that ended, I started working one-on-one -on -one with her. Mm -hmm. And since then to now, I've had one month off from working one-on-one -on -one with Morgan Wow. I see her, are we talk? And that started in 2020. In 2020. Beginning of 2020. Yeah. So March, April, I believe I hired her personally in May, one-on-one -on -one in May. And my journey then, so 2020 was kind of, I don't remember the growth. I actually have all the recordings of every mm. single session that we've ever done. I feel like 21, I was going, I went deep into my shadow work. Mm. So that included my mom, my, all the family trauma, da, da, you know, all of that stuff. And then 22 and 21, she did a lot of group work as well. So I did every group course and worked one-on-one. -on -one. So I was just like. You were inundated. I, I was like, okay, I'm in. I'm going deep. I'm going as far in, in as I can possibly yeah. go. You were all because in. I ain't fucking around. Yeah. Because even today. This, this next course that I'm launching, the energy that's coming through me to to do this is the most stricken and powerful. It changes me first. And it's just like, ah, it's like a roller coaster yeah. of energy. So I was like, all of that work was leading up to, to what now. I'm about to launch in June. So we'll talk about that. Yes. Tell, let's talk about how, what you're receiving has, how it came in. Okay. What it looks like and where it's going. Okay. That has been about a two month journey of, um, I may get emotional. It's really, it's really beautiful. And it's been a big, big journey for me is I, there was aspects of my business that just weren't fulfilling me. And I love, I love working with people. I love doing one-on-one. -on -one, I love doing group yet. There wasn't something that was just like, like a power burst of energy yet. And I was in a session with Morgan and <laughs> literally I'm a channel, she's a channel. And I'm like, I was asking questions and spirit's like, nope, not telling you. <laughs> 
It was like Whoa. so bizarre and funny. Yet because Spirit's like, no, we want you to go and ask your sisters to give you the answer. So uh, of of our community, of other channels. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I messaged a couple of my friends and I said, look, I would love to have a quick chat and I would love to ask you a favor. Uh, and then so one, I'd ask them to channel for me. What is it? What's my next step in my business? What's the next journey for me? So they, a couple of them re- replied and channeled for me. And one of them, she's like, I don't even need to channel. You need to be doing the feminine stuff. And uh, so- so I she was, just knew instantly. She knew. She's been telling me for two years to do this stuff. Mm. I wasn't ready. And so Janine mentioned the divine feminine and or she actually it wasn't even just about that. It was more about the physicality, mm. the embodiment of, of the feminine energy, getting physical with it. Uh, like, Explain and, that a little bit so people so, can understand. Yeah, it's tough. Like- the world has learnt and f- women in general have learnt that it you don't get anywhere in your feminine. <laughs> well, <laughs> but explain the, the difference there, there's masculine and feminine because we all oh, have yes. both. Yes, I mean, that's, exactly. That's a huge point that yeah. maybe not everybody listening knows. Yes, that's what I'm okay. saying. So explain it a little bit. Okay, p- perfect. So the feminine is more about a receiving energy. She is a magnet to the, her experience. So it's more about trusting and sitting in – the energy of your own creation of what you want to magnetize in. The difference of the masculine is it's more action-based. So females is receiving. The the feminine is receiving. The masculine is taking action and doing Mm -hmm. and an output of energy. Right. So that is the main difference to really – differentiate between the two and to simplify it a little bit. Yeah. Just as a, at a very simple level, right, right. at a basic level. And w- our current construct, societal, familial, educational, like every single area of life teaches you, you must do to succeed mm-hmm. at a base level. Mm-hmm. That's a very basic, you know, but it's true. Summation. Yes. Yeah. And it doesn't tell you magnetize to create or do less to be more effective if that they're not the, the, the brain comprehensible kind of glitches. Mm -hmm. And so true. That is what is being challenged right now by what through the energy that has started to like shift in the world. Yeah. Shift in the world and really come into the container that I'm creating called Mm. the wild feminine. Okay. So yes, there's the divine feminine, the divine masculine, and they are, they're more the ethereal versions of the energy, whereas the wild feminine is more about the embodiment of your experience of the energy in your physical body. Mm -hmm. And that is, it comes in many different levels. It comes in like the concept of it really is getting in touch with who are you at a primal level? Like what are your needs what are your wants and how do you get them? Mm-hmm. Like are you going to – because what's been revealed to me is a lot of women are trying to be in their feminine but they're trying to get it in a masculine way. Right. By doing stuff. Right. <laughs> and it's not – that's normal because there's there's it's not a human much, condition. Yeah, yeah. It's the construct of energy that if it doesn't support something new, like how are you going to know to, how to get there? Mm-hmm. So that's why the, people struggle with manifestation in general. Yes. They don't even, they can't understand it. It's tough to understand. Yes. But it's such a natural energetic thing. Yes. Yes. Keep going. Uh, so what's coming in to just mention is, and sometimes I channel some of these things. There's like, there's so many greats that talked about manifestation. There's Florence Scovel Shin, Wallace D. Wattles, Dale Carnegie, He's all about that in a different way, yet yeah, it's it it creates mm-hmm. a lot of manifestation with the, his techniques, and and there's been these women in history. I don't know their names right now, but I'm writing them in a presentation that okay. I'm putting together for the Wild Feminine, and they've held this structure of energy of the wild woman, of going against society mm. in in sharing that 
this is not the way it has to be that we are going to get way more. We're going to get way further as a human race when we deeply honor the roots of the true wild feminine and what that means. And at the moment, <laughs> there's not much fucking information <laughs> right. about that. Mm-hmm. It's, it was suppressed for a really, really long time. Mm-hmm. Even as I'm channeling it, this, there's this like kind of this pristineness around mm-hmm. it. So it's really about imbo- feeling the body, embodying it. Like it's so and, huge. Uh, yes, it's, this is all resonating big time yeah. with me. Oh yeah, awesome. And and not the thing is not trying to fucking figure it out. Right. Stop trying so hard. Yeah, let it in. Yeah. Like be receptive. Yeah, surrender to control. Yes, like open up. Um because like the the same thinking that got us here is not going to get us out. No. You know that's fucking Einstein like yeah, that exactly. dude he knows. Yeah, shit. exactly. <laughs> no, I think it's funny that people that are dabble in the spiritual understanding don't realize how scientific, oh, I'm tingling on my Mm. crown, how scientific things have been shown and like you said, proven Mm -hmm. over time with brains like Einstein, perfect example of things that we already accept. Yes. As as human uh, nature, just where we are in society, we accept that. Yes. And it's all connected. It's all the same. Yes. It just looks different. It's explained different. Yes. But we've accepted it here, but not here. Yeah. That's what's so crazy. Yeah. And I, I love Einstein. I'm obsessed with Einstein. I was actually Einstein's assistant in a past life. I had mm. that recall recent, like in the last four years. That's cool. Uh, things. And what Einstein's sharing here is that there's an integration point that wants to happen because we go, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Energy, you can't create it or destroy it or you can only trans fucking mute it. Right. And we want to, and the thing is, is like, we go, yeah, yeah. We know that. La, 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 la. <laughs> but we don't, but we don't do anything about it. Yes, exactly. We don't harness it, it at all. Yes, exactly. And it's like, why? Yeah. What the fuck? Cause we're so stuck. Yeah, in in doing things a, a, manually, in a way, manually, manually, <laughs> exactly. We do everything manually, exactly. And there's this like surrender, this, the surrender point, and then also questioning mm. why. That's an important process of coming to the new, of pausing, asking, why do I do it like this? Why do I think like this? Where did this fucking, what is the root cause of this thought pattern? And once we get to that, you can understand like, oh, this is not mine. This is my dad's. Right. This is my mom's. Mm-hmm. This is my grandfather's. This is like whomever it this is. This is my karmic energy that's con- 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 continuing on. Exactly. Yeah. Replaying, exactly. replaying, replaying. Exactly. And it's like, how would transmuting that energy better serve you into like what will unlock that energy to like create more ease. Because it's still there. And flow. It's there. It's already there. <laughs> exactly. I know. It's just being like locked. So you gotta transform it. Exactly. So Einstein is like, yes, that energy can be transformed with intention mm-hmm. and physically. A- and attention and physically in the body. And um, it's so cute that this is coming in right now because orgasm is one way of transmuting anything. Oh my gosh. Okay. So you're touching all the buttons. <laughs> pardon, pardon the pun. <laughs> Not exactly. Pardon the pun. <laughs> Not yet. Well, yeah. <laughs> Um, no, I, I figured it out where, where that book about, um, Mary Magdalene mm. and he touches it's, um, oh. Dr. Uh, oh gosh, I'm covered. He's on a podcast with, oh gosh, now I can't think of her name. My niece, Rhiannon sent it to me and I listened to the podcast. It was a two part podcast and he talks about everything you're talking about mm. masculine feminine. I mean, it's, mm. we're having, he had the same conversation on this podcast. I'm going to share it with you. Cause you'll yes, be like, please. Oh my God, it's everything you're saying. Wow. And I was just talking about, I was telling Eric, my husband, I was like, Oh my gosh, this podcast, everything about I'm covered in goosebumps. Everything in that podcast, I was like on fire about it was like, wow. Oh my gosh, this is the, tr- this is truth. He talks about Einstein. He talks about male, uh, feminine, masculine energy. He talks about manifestation. He talks about all of the things we're talking about right now. It's all of that. Mm-hmm. And it's connecting back with nature yep. and how we bring in all of these things. Like you said, energy is consistent. It doesn't ever go anywhere. It just mm-hmm. changes form. So mm-hmm. if we can figure out how to manifest it into our physical selves, into our physical world, mm-hmm. 
It because we can. Yeah. I mean, we really truly can. Yeah. We are a a transmuting machine. Yes. And the, it's the, the sex thing. That's that's why why yes. I brought that up because he was talking about in orgasm, literally yeah. that that is that is the one time, and it doesn't last. But it's in that moment, and it can last longer for women than it can for men. And there's mm-hmm. a reason because mm-hmm. it, it, it it's easier for the feminine energy to do those things yes. and harness that power. And it truly, it, as strange as that may sound to people, it really does happen in that moment of climax. Yep, it's powerful. Yep, that's an egoless point. Exactly. That's why it is so powerful. It's it just it it's mind blowing because that is a physical sensation. Yeah, yep. but it's so much more powerful than that. Yeah. Yep, it op- literally it, it's a portal opener. It opens portals to new possibility. And in my channel, I do a meditation class every Tuesday and it's mostly women. Some men do make it there sometimes, but I had I had this lesson recently. Like I I'm not in a partnership at the moment, so I don't have as much sex as normal as I might like. <laughs> but um I had this experience of with my stage shows that I hadn't had an orgasm for probably seven days and I got on stage and I was stiff. I, I overthought it. I couldn't learn my songs. I was not connected. My gut was not connected to my head. Like I had no fucking gut brain fucking connection. I was a mess. Mm -hmm. I was literally a mess and I designed, it was like, Oh my God, when you awaken, it's a bitch. And it's fucking awesome <laughs> all at the same That's time. Very, that's very true. Because I'm like, it like was why can't I, what's preventing me? What's it happening? It was so painful for like a week, but I would never have remembered it this well had it not been that painful. Mm-hmm. I, I'm actually going to do a talk about transmuting pain into p- pleasure, purpose, play, power, because literally pain is the most golden thing mm. to transmute into Everything. 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 Literally anything we want in life can be what transmuted. What am I to learn from the pain? From it's, pain. Yes, I know. It's so true. What is happening from the pathway from pain into what you want to create in your life? Because most people get stuck on pain, right. numb the pain, medicate the fucking pain, try and like push the pain down. It's Instead, like, examining the pain. Just fucking love the pain and get curious with the pain and go into it and go, oh my God, there's, there's so much to be what harvested. Am, what am I supposed to get from this? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So this one particular situation, like I can remember my outfits, my songs, everything. And I remember seeing myself on stage and going, oh my God, you look fat. You look awful. You Mm. sang terribly. I couldn't remember my lyrics. Nothing, nothing fucking worked. Yeah. And then spirit's like, you needed an orgasm. (laughs) That was it. Wow. That was it. And the message from that day is that minimum, either with a partner or DIY orgasm, Th- minimum three times a week. Hmm. Three fucking times. There you go. You're welcome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. And run gals. with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I know lots of people that are doing just fine in that arena. <laughs> <laughs> Yet with some more consciousness of why. Okay, so explain that. Well, th- if you're out there just like mindlessly fucking or mindlessly, you know, just rubbing one out, not having true sacred connection. Mm, there's a difference. It's huge, huge, huge difference with intentional play and unconscious play, let's call it. Because it's okay to unconsciously play as well, yet it it's your it's, life. It's, but it's different, yeah. Like why, why do anything unconsciously when we're in the hugest – fucking awakening of the human race that has ever happened in human history. Mm -hmm. Why stay unconscious? Right. Because when you bring Like you said, the same reason people stay in the pain. Yeah. They think think it's easy. We think it's easier. They think, yes, exactly. That is the- Again, the manual way, (laughs) right? I mean that on lots of, in lots of ways. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) My kids are going to be like, mom. (laughs) Yeah, so- Bringing consciousness to it of going, I'm releasing my own inner fucking power that sits inside of us Mm -hmm. all the time. It's not going anywhere, Mm -mm. yet it could be stress. It could be pain. It could be overthinking. Mm -hmm. It could be that same energy 
is manifesting in all sorts of fucked up ways that are hurting, literally hurtling the physical body, Mm -hmm. creating cortisone, blocking all the um, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin from being released. Give yourself one orgasm, it all changes. You literally transmute all of those things into dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin as you orgasm. I don't know the the total science about around this. I am going to learn, learn more. more about that because mm-hmm. I haven't gotten to this level in conversation with anyone yet, right? which is fucking awesome. Well, it is awesome because I literally was just hearing. Yeah. That's why I'm like, ugh, mind blown right now. Yeah. And so the whole body relaxes. Mm-hmm. Your entire system relaxes. Your muscles relax. It can't not. It can't not, exactly. That's the difference. It can't not after yes. that. And with the intention that you're doing it to love yourself. Exactly. To it's, connect, and there has to be intention behind exactly, it. Exactly. To connect with yourself physically. That that has been another thing that's been really highlighted recently is this disconnection between the body and like just just like disassociation from the body. Mm-hmm. It's so crucial. It has, it's so part of it. It is the biggest, most beautiful piece of this existence that we have these physical bodies to have these experiences. And so our souls can grow. Mm -hmm. They are together in this. They are not separate. So like I've said this before, people that think meditation is an escape from this, it's not. It's an enhancement of this. It's a whole new understanding of them playing together to have these experiences on a whole new level. Yep, exactly. I mean, it's, it's a whole new level of existence. Yep. And it is with the body, the grounding of the body, physical. Exactly. That's what it's, that's what uh, the Mayans missed. It's what the Atlanteans missed. Mm. It's what- even, Right. They went, they yes. went to, they ascended they too ascended much. They ascended out of the body. Yes, and that exactly. I can say we, exactly. the Atlanteans, I was there. I don't feel like I was at the May, in the Mayan, that, that journey. Definitely was experienced that as an Atlantean. And that's what we came here to shift in this timeline. Mm. was to get, like we understood way too late then, but it's about the embodiment, even Gandhi. Gandhi thought he came and transcended. No, he didn't. He was out, he's, he was out of body. Right. He actually, Gandhi, Martin Luther, um, they both came into a session of mine once. Like I'm mm. born on the same day as Martin Luther King, so I'm a- mm. like, yeah, a connection. Yeah, a deep, deep connection. And so they both came in, yet, so actually- Three of them came in. Jesus, Gandhi, and Martin Luther came into a session once. And they they told me to say this. I'm not fucking- This is when you were alone? No, when, when you were Morgan. in. Okay. Yeah, in a, in a um, coaching session. Now, they came in to illustrate something very specific, that Jesus came and fully succeeded at what he wanted to do. He came- He embodied. He w- came, exactly. He came way before his time, intentionally. He- he told us that we have in our physical body what it takes to be the most powerful energetic beings that we can be as long as we do certain things like disengage from the ego mm-hmm. and, you know, connect to oh, spirit. Oh, just a few little things. <laughs> no big deal, guys. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole nother talk. <laughs> yes, it is. And so he achieved what he wanted to achieve. Right. He did that. He mm-hmm. had the impact and then so people could then just argue about it for the next exactly. hundreds and, and fight hundreds and, of years yeah. and kill each other, all that all that horrible stuff. But when, that's another story altogether. So he did make that impact. Now with Martin Luther and Gandhi, they didn't achieve what they – they did. But in, was different this, level, different in degree. this session they shared that they didn't achieve what they wanted to because Gandhi – thought he had, but he was just out of body all the time. He thought he'd like reached that place of samadhi, mm-hmm. yet he was out of body. Right. And the point is to do it in the body in because body. 
you, we're human. Right. We came here to have the human experience. Exactly. We didn't come here to ascend the human body. No, because we we, we're going to do that body. in the end anyway. Exactly. We need to do this here. Exactly. So to bring the energy, our soul self, and have a full integrated, that's what Einstein integrated, was saying, in, integrated. integrated into the human experience because our soul has all the answers. Mm-hmm. Our soul, ha- soul has all and that's the automatic. wisdom. Yes. yes. And, and the thing is the ego is in the, in the physical, is in the mind that blocks, but that's a beautiful journey as well. The exactly. undoing, the integrating, it's, it's also work that I help people to, to do and to quantify and to break down and to like have ego strategies where you can let the soul come in and guide into living a more fulfilling life. You right. know, well, it's almost like the way I look at it is like the ethereal bodies that we have, like the e- the the logic and the emotional. It's like that dance too. They have to jive together. Yes. To accomplish the, the ultimate experience. Yes. I mean, they, exactly. they have to be together. Logic is, you know, I'm just going to do this without any rationality. The emotion is I'm going to go haywire because I'm so emotional. They really do play together. They have to exist together. That's yes. To me, that's how I view our physicality and our soul selves and, and the full embodiment, like you said, integration. Yeah. And you're right. I hadn't really thought about it in comparing you know, masters like Christ and Gandhi and Martin Luther, Martin Luther, you know, people like that, that have had beautiful experiences and lots of knowledge and wisdom that they've shared with our human race. Yeah. But to really fully embody and experience that it's a whole nother level and it's not easy to do. It's our challenge. It's, it is, it is our challenge and that, and we are all working in the same energy field. So us having this conversation, we are impacting the energy field and everyone who's listening to this who agrees, even some of you will not agree with this shit and that's okay too. Mm -hmm. It's every soul. Yeah. It's connecting every soul. It doesn't matter. Literally, we are are shifting a fucking paradigm right now. I know. Of birthing... Like connecting these dots, mm-hmm. like sharing this this ancient wisdom mm-hmm. that has been here since like ancient Egyptian times. Right. They lived this. Mm-hmm. Why were they so wealthy? Because they didn't have the same like attachments mm-hmm. as had been taught in the last few hundred years. Right. They had a very, very, very different structure of how they approached reality. Yeah. Or they didn't have as many like um kind materialism of, looked different. It did. They weren't attached to it right. so much. They had a lot of it, but yeah. it was not their everything. Yes. It was true. much past it was much further beyond that. There was a there was a very high spiritual aspect to it. I have a very strong memory recall of being there in So Egypt. okay, so this this what did you call it? Feminine Class, wild, wild, wild feminine. woman, yes. wild feminine. So what does that look like? How, like what, how are you engaging with people? Are you still kind of building this, figuring out what it's going to look like? Or do you have a set course? Are you offering this? What does this look like? Cause I know people are going to be like, well, I want to do this. <laughs> yeah. The first session is what is a two hour online zoom session It's going to be recorded. There will be three aspects to it. Some people can come and just be there and learn passively and they don't have to have their camera on and be, it can be a more private journey. Then I have another tier that people will be hot seat coached and, and really be able to be seen if, if that's their jam and they really love that. And there's another tier that is like, they will get some one-on-one work with me. So literally I'm just launching one session right now. It's going to be the 13th of June in the evening, 6.30 to 8.30 PM. And I will have, I, I'm, I'm still building it. I still like build out my acuity links and things and my invites, but yes, it's, it's, it's accessible. Like mm. if somebody reaches out to me, I can definitely um, guide them in for that. And are you still going to continue doing just regular coaching? Like you have been, yes. is that something we part of? So talk about all the different things that you do. Cause I want people to be able to engage with you where they can find you, what the services are that you offer for people yeah. and why it's, Powerful. Okay. And if you think that they're the right, if they're in the right stage to really approach this. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. I run a meditation class every Tuesday night, six to 7 PM also recorded. And there's a, there's a membership offering and then you can come and do dropping classes if you don't want to do the full monthly uh, membership. 
that is at the moment it, we're opening channel two wild feminine inside that as well. And that's what I've been guided to do. So in every single coaching session that's happening at the moment, the wild feminine is present mm. and she's supporting. And I've been, I was guided just to do that to like really start to feel her and really start to, I mean, it expands my container. Uh, so, so that's based around the wild feminine. The meditation class is based around that as well. And I also do one-on-one sessions with people. I do an entry point really could be a channeling session, which is an, a, half, a half an hour session or a coaching session, which is a bit deeper and it really is about one topic. The channeling, you can bring in a few topics. And why they're powerful is if you've ever had questions about either a loved one passing or would like to connect with your guides or would like to open up energy. Maybe you've just had a niggle in the back of your mind going, oh yeah, I I remember I was psychic in the past and that's gone away. Or you've been empathic and shut that down, which is very normal. Like it's a very normal journey to have gifts and shut them down because they are they are overwhelming mm-hmm. for Especially the people. when you're young. Exactly. And you don't know how to navigate them or you don't have anyone to talk to about them. Right. It's much easier just to say go away and then they need they have to go away because they honor your free will. Once we're in session and community, it's the most important thing is to have a community. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're creating, that we have the online group, which is a beautiful small community right now, and then doing one-on-one work. You can get questions answered. You can find direction. I work with a lot of women who have a calling, a soul calling, who may be in the corporate world and that corporate job has taken over and their calling had fallen to the wayside and I help reconnect them with their calling. So their calling can become their main focus. And then that's where their soul gets fulfilled. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it's not being fulfilled in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. I said, that is a lot of work that I help people to step into. And then once you've stepped into that life's more fun, it's more lighthearted. Mm -hmm. It is like every moment becomes a joy to be in, you have more physical energy because you like what happens when you know that you have a greater calling and aren't doing it, it takes a lot of work Mm -hmm. because you're denying yourself the truth of why your soul chose to be here this life. Right. And that takes energy Mm -hmm. to not do. It takes almost two or three times more energy to resist your path than it does to live it. Isn't that what? Say that again. <laughs> People need to hear that again. It takes two or three more times of energy output to resist your path than to live it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Mm. I mean, that's huge. Mm. It is. It's huge. And then once you give yourself permission, you can keep the job for fuck's sake. You don't have to. T- <laughs> You don't have to change everything at once. Right. It's just once you reopen the door to your real true soul purpose and what you came here to do. Right. And to hold the space for the tribe that you came here to hold space for, Mm -hmm. your soul gets set on fire Mm -hmm. and you're just happier all the time. And you've just got like, like more vibrancy to bring to everything that you're doing. Right. Yeah. You're more fulfilled. You're happier. You're peaceful. Yeah. You have more joy. Yes. The little things that come in, the pain points, you move through them much faster and you examine them in a different way to say, what am I to learn from this? Exactly. Instead of, I need to put this fire out or numb it or whatever. It's, yeah, it's, well, that's what this whole platform is all about is to share that message for people. So they know that, yes, we're here to live a life, life, love, purpose, going back to that. Mm. I mean, we have a life, but Mm. aligning your life with love and your self-love and your soul self and Mm. why you came here, which is truly love. Yes. It steps you into your purpose. And then when your purpose, like you were saying before, and this is on another podcast that's going live next week, um, we talk about this, is that that energy that we're put, like we're putting out right now is affecting all souls. Yes. Vibrate higher. And to elevate and to lift and to understand. It's it's so much more powerful than we can even comprehend. And to know that is it's important 
because it changes how you approach things. Exactly. Exactly. It changes everything. Mm -hmm. It does. It really does. So what is the best way for people? To, how do people find you if yes. they want to engage in all these things that you do? What's, yes. How do they find you? I have a website, Sarah with an H, jstrong.com. On Instagram, I'm Sarah, S-A-R-A-H underscore the underscore strong. Sarah now, the strong. I love Sarah it. the strong. Strong is my last name, yes. truly. And if you like reach out to me on Instagram, mention that you heard me on this podcast and I will send you a freebie meditation as a thank you for reaching out. And I just love giving away freebies. I have a lot of, I record meditations every week and so they're channeled fresh every week. So it's going to be some valuable upgrades. We did amazing upgrades this, uh, actually last night. And we're stepping more into that feminine, that wild feminine energy, which she is no fucking joke. This energy <laughs> is no joke. She is yeah. like more direct than I've ever felt in any channel that I've channeled. And less manual. <laughs> way less. It's like she gives way less fucks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, through my website um, you can send me a – there's an email gathering there. There's a free meditation on my website as well. If you do the popped in with the email, the Instagram, please do reach out to me and I'll, I'd love to connect with, um, there's ways to book sessions and things on my website as well. Okay, good. Um, this has been such a pleasure. I've really loved this conversation. Mm. So many things have been um, screaming at me and they screamed even louder today. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> so that was really great. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your beauty and your gifts and your purpose with the world. Mm, thank you. It's beautiful. You. It's my pleasure. Honestly, this is my path mm -hmm. and it's my duty yeah. to do this. Mm -hmm. Well, once you know it, you can unknow it. Exactly. And this is one thing I wanted to share that's come through for, for me really clearly in the last couple of days of like searching deeply into what I really want in life and like what do I really want? And what am I, what am I really fucking doing? Mm. And what came through is that this earth, mother earth is imbalanced right now. And the, the being that I am, I've done this on other planets in other star systems. I have gone and helped them change the structure of energy there. I'm not saying I'm being led to say this, like I am a master of the energy. Mm -hmm. I understand how it works. I know the like inner workings of energy. And by me not doing what I came here to do, earth will remain imbalanced with the birth of the wild feminine energy. Earth comes back into balance. Mm. And my question for everyone who's listening right now is that how is, your tribe suffering with you not doing what you came here to do mm. because you personally have a tribe that only you can serve and what shit are they in by you not doing that? How are you stepping into that? Like you all know, you know who I'm talking to here. I'm getting this vision of there is some – of you listening that ha that know you have a calling and you've been denying it for a long time and that's okay too because that was your path. Now is a time to step into your pathway to learn about your ancient wisdom, to step into it and start living it because you will be changed in the process and everyone you come into contact will with will benefit mm -hmm. from you, your cho choosing yourself. Yes. Uh, that's a huge point. Choosing yourself. That's the self-love movement that I'm all about. Yeah. Choose your self-love. Choose to love yourself because it has every benefit possible for everyone else. Yes. Exactly. You can't, you, you can't go wrong no, you <laughs> when can't. you choose self and you choose self-love. Self -love. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It yeah. sounds like such a simple thing to say, but it really is extremely powerful. Yeah. Extremely powerful. Yeah, it's true. I mean, it's, it's a difficult process. The first, the first 
they say a lot in, you know, these uh, motivational talks is like make one choice. Mm -hmm. And what's the choice that you can make that will change everything? The choice you can make today that will change everything is choose yourself. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. (laughs) hundred million times. Yes. Really? That is the truth. That is the ultimate truth. (laughs) That is the ultimate truth. If there's one truth, that's it. Mm -hmm. Choose you. Because when you do, everybody benefits. It's not selfish. It's the opposite. Yes. And that can be a lot of boundary work. It can be a lot of a lot of upheaval in the beginning, mm-hmm. a lot of difficulty, a lot of pain, a lot of letting go. And yes, that is historically why humanity and people out there haven't done this yet is because it's hard work, but it's not work in the old sense. This is soul work. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm here to help with. I'm here to help the human race to change the way we've been running shit for a long time now to go into more ease, more play, more fun, more pleasure, to actually really know what brings you play and pleasure. To remember your light. Yeah. Remember your light. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's incredible. I That was so well said. I really was well said. Thank you so much again for being here. I'm grateful that I know you. I'm glad that we've become friends and I'm really happy that you were able to share this message. Mm, Honestly, it's my deepest honor and pleasure. Thank you for asking such poignant questions and having such a curious heart and journey. Mm. I appreciate you so much, Tammy. Thank Thank you. you. I appreciate that. And that is absolutely the truth. I say this all the time. I am doing this for me. I am learning Mm. as I speak and have these conversations. These are experiences that I'm having that, and I was saying this to a friend on the phone the other day before I wrap up, I was telling her, I said, because I was giving her some words of wisdom. And I said, by the way, these words I'm telling myself, this isn't for you, this is for me. (laughs) And she started laughing. I said, I'm telling you the truth. What I'm saying is so I hear it. Mm. So there's a lot of power in that to realize that everything you're saying, you're saying to yourself, So value that. Mm, Wow. (sighs) Thank all of you for being here and joining us on Tammy Tuesday. I hope that you enjoyed the message today. I certainly loved this conversation. It was really good, very powerful. Lots of great things um, that were shared. So I'm grateful for that. And if you want more information, of course, more on Tammy Tuesday, you can go to my website, TammyTuesday.com. There's some things in development there that you'll be able to get more engagement there. You can also follow us on social media at Tammy Tuesday Life. And um, please, please, if you're watching or listening, because we are on YouTube as well, please hit that subscribe button because it does allow the way our world works with algorithms for people that need this message to find it. So be sure you do that as well as follow, like, um, comments. We love the comments as well. So we're grateful that you're able to participate with us and always leaving you with lots of love and light. And remember, life, love, and purpose, it all begins with you. Peace out.